Hey, I've got another integral today from MIT Integration B 2015. This is problem number nine. We have the integral from zero to two of x over x minus three or times x plus five squared dx. Okay, this really stands out as the case where we need to use partial fractions just because we have our denominator um, that looks like it needs to be broken up. Before I get started on the partial fractions, one thing I did I don't know, I liked it, it seemed to help a little bit, even though I don't know if it doesn't really seem to matter, but I did a u substitution to set it up first. So I'm gonna call my u x plus five, and then that makes our du equal to dx, taking the derivative of x plus five is just dx. Then I wanna find, let's see, so for x, I just wanna get an expression for everything. So x is gonna be u minus five, and that would make x minus three, we could subtract three, on both sides of this and we'd have for x minus 3 this is going to be u minus 8. So now I'll make this substitution I'll just update my bounds so for uh, 2 we'll plug that in here we're going to have 2 plus 5 7 and then at 0 this our u is going to become 5. And we'll plug in we have all our values so for our numerator for x we're going to have u minus 5 then for x minus 3 we're going to have u minus 8 and then for x plus five, we just get our u squared. I think that's why I like it, maybe just turning that into a u squared. And now for the partial fractions, we'll just break this up into, this is gonna be three pieces actually. So we're gonna have, for our first, we're gonna say, we'll have u minus eight, and then our, we'll just have an a here. Whatever's in the numerator should be one degree less than what you have in the denominator, plus b, and this is like a um, building up the power case. So we'll have b over u plus c over u squared du. We'll need to plug, plug an 8 in here, and then we'll just kind of cover that up. We put an 8 in for u, and that's going to be a 3. And then we plug an 8 in here, we get a 64. So our a is going to be 3 over 64. And similar for our c value, if we plug a 0 in here, now, of course, we can't multiply that over because we'd be dividing by zero, but we, that's why we just cover it up when we just look at the other terms. So just looking at this other part, if we put, put, put a zero in here, we have minus five. We put a zero in here, we have a minus eight. Dividing that, we're going to have just five eights. And then this is the case we can't easily do a cover-up for our b value because we already use zero. If we do zero again, we're just going to get the same thing. So we need to solve for this b value. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to actually just get a common denominator. So we're going to have like for our a, 3 over 64. To get back to this, we need to multiply by u squared. So we'll just say 3 over 64 times u squared. Then we'll have our b term. To get the common denominator, we're going to have to have a u minus 8 times a single u. We already have one u. And then here to get a common denominator, we have our c value, 5 eighths. We're going to, have to multiply by u minus 8, and this whole thing needs to be equal to u minus 5. But the thing is, now this here, u minus 8 times u, this is going to be u squared minus 8. Now, this would be kind of messy, but we really only have to worry about our b. This is the only thing we're doing this for. What I'm going to do is just look at the u squared. So 3 over 64 u squared. Here, we, if we multiply b into this, we're going to have plus b times u squared. Now over here we've got no u squared, right? We could write it like zero u squared. So this thing all has to be equal to zero is there is no u squared. So for this to be zero, b has to be minus three over 64. And so now we have that, we have minus three over 64, and we don't need the rest of this equation as we've found our a, b, and c value. And now with this, we're ready to integrate. We get three easy integrals. I'm just gonna rewrite this just to clean it up a little bit. Okay, now with the rewrite, all I did was take my a, b, and c values, brought it outside of the integral because those are all constants. I rewrote this um, u squared in the denominator as u minus two. And so now we can integrate this thing. For the first one, we're gonna have three over 64, natural log u minus eight, minus three over 64, natural log, absolute value u, um, and then plus five over eight, u minus two integrated, that's gonna be u to the minus one, but then we're gonna have a minus here, so I'm just gonna replace, uh, put a minus right there. Then since we can see this is 
this is positive, I'm gonna remove an absolute value here because as you can see, our bounds are always positive. So whatever we put in there is gonna be positive. So we don't need that absolute value there. So since this is always gonna be negative, what we can do is remove the absolute value, but reverse it and write this as eight minus u. Okay, so now all I need to do is just evaluate this whole long expression and simplify and we should be done. So let's start with this part here. So we're gonna have three over 64 natural log of eight minus seven is one. So the ln of one is zero. So, so this first piece at seven is gonna be zero. So we'll just have a zero there. Then we're gonna go next to our minus three over 64 natural log at seven is just gonna be an ln of seven. Then minus five over eight times seven, five over 56. Then we'll have a minus sign in between. We're gonna plug in our five. So we're gonna have three over 64, eight minus five natural log of three minus three over 64 natural log of our five. Then we're gonna have minus five over eight times five is 40. Let's just cancel the five and we're gonna have here a one over eight. Next, I'm just gonna distribute this minus sign in here and then I'm actually gonna group all the log functions together and all the fractions together. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor out a minus three over 64 from all of our natural log terms because these first two are negative, so let's just do it that way. But then when we do that, so we'll have our natural log, and by the property of natural logs, we can kind of multiply and divide. So our natural log of seven is gonna be positive, and a natural log of three is positive. So that's gonna be seven times three, or 21. But then we have this term is gonna be minus, so we're gonna have a five in the denominator. And then here, one eighth minus 56, you just need a common denominator. If we multiply, top and bottom here by seven, we're gonna have seven over 56. So seven minus, yeah, seven over 56 minus five over 56 is two over 56, but that's the same thing as one over 28. So we're just gonna have a positive one over 28 here. And that's gonna be our solution. That's it, MIT 2015, problem number nine. If you want more practice on partial fractions, I have a quiz, partial fractions, integrals. I'll provide a link to that in the description. Also, I have a partial fractions cheat sheet that just covers these different scenarios where you have like the repeat power, but it's sometimes it's hard to remember that you have to do something different with the repeat power versus higher degree polynomials, etc. So I'll provide a link to that. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a good day.